Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome inside episode 422 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, we have to let you know today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. Well, the win was nice while it lasted. The Senators back in the losing column for the fourth time in five games, falling embarrassingly to the Chicago Blackhawks. 5-1. The final score, and if you had only watched the first period and had to go to sleep for whatever reason, you woke up, you heard 5-1, you probably thought the Sens rolled, but the wheels fell off and it all started with a late goal in the first period. We'll get into the entirety of this one, but just like I said at Sens Central on Twitter, the best part of last night's game is that they have an opportunity to play again today. So we'll take a look at the Minnesota Wild, tonight's opponent. How can they wrap up this road trip with a victory I will ask, see if Pildy knows the answer to that and more. This is the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day. Today is Tuesday, November 2nd, and Pilsy, those pesky momentum goals really did the sends in in Chicago. Yeah, I mean, Ross, we talk about it all the time. It's the goals at the start of a period, at the end of a period, and right around when another goal is scored. And check, check, check last night. Uh, yeah, but the only thing is they were momentum goals for the bad guys, the Chicago Blackhawks, and that really ruined the sense. I mean, like you mentioned in the intro, like that first period, the boys were buzzing. Like they were looking good. That top unit, as they have been all year, was really uh, popping off. Alex Formanton had a couple chances. Like this team was looking good in the first period. And then they let that momentum goal happen and things just go downhill from there. Well, it was the long shift that led to the the momentum goal. But ultimately, I think this game really fell apart in the second period. That once Patrick Kane scored the power play goal, well, your lookout player, and for me, it was keep Chicago off the power play as they end up going one for two. So they only gave him two chances, but it still comes back to bite them. That was 209 into the second period. So yeah, it sucks giving up one at the end of the first period, especially when they played as well as they did. Yeah. But Pilsy, to me, man, it's that second one because you, you can kind of battle through one, but once that second one went in, the ice tilted in a big time fashion. Well, and especially... I don't think they could have given up a bigger momentum goal, right? Patrick Kane coming back from COVID protocol scores on the power play at the Madhouse. Like that's, if you want to get the crowd into the game, that's how you do it. Putting them up to nothing on the power play. So that was tough. And you know what? It's tough for Matt Murray too, because I, I don't think it's fair to say he had a bad game, but he certainly didn't have a good one. Right. And there was times where, he looked like there was, uh, I forget which goal it was. It might have even been that, oh no, it was a third goal. And since we've already talked about the first two, we can get into this. That third goal, there's no excuse for that. Now I know it's a weird shot. It's when uh, Hagel just fires the puck on net from the blue line. It hits off uh, one of the Ottawa Senators players skates. There's traffic in front, but that's a low pass that's sliding along the ice at such a low speed and Matt Murray is all the way in the back of his net when the puck is at the point like sure maybe you don't want to be fully out because then if that guy uh, makes a cross ice pass and you're out of position and that's tough but you can't be all the way back there and you don't need to see that puck to stop it that puck should just hit you with how slow it's going so I think when that goal happened, that goal for me, Ross, was when it was done. Like when it was 2-0, I still thought the Sens had a chance here. I thought they they still had uh, some sort of uh, positivity to go off. 2-0, you can come back from that. But the 3-0 goal where it's just sliding along the ice and Matt Murray just straight up misses it, that's when I was like, okay, this it's the kind of night we're having. That's about all we we can do here. Yeah, and they added insult to injury just moments later. And how about the timing of this tweet? I'm pulling it up. At Send Central, I put out in the second intermission, we need this third period energy. 
Well, that didn't age well as the Ottawa Senators not only gave up that goal to Hagel, his second of the game. Who is Brandon Hagel? I thought he was going to get a hat trick. I was like, classic sense. Like, Brandon Hagel, never heard of him. He's going to pop off for a hattie. And he almost did. Yeah, well, if you're going to give a guy a hattie, it may as well be Patrick Kane, like one of the most talented players in the league. But that Hagel goal, no excuse if you're Matt Murray. And if the excuse is that there's a body right in front of the net, well, get out right behind him and challenge him. Make it hard for him to screen you. Like, that was the easiest screen of all time. And Matt Murray's heels were on the goal line, and the puck was literally at the blue line. I thought Shabbat did a great job following his man from behind the net, staying man-on-man coverage all the way out. And I I, I kind of joked, uh, I think I mentioned to you last night, that it kind of reminded me of the spot that Drake Batherson just flung the puck on net, and it worked. But... In this situation, it's on the ice. There's absolutely no excuse. Yeah, it didn't go one. bar down in like the most perfect spot ever. Like this was a pass along the ice that just rolls right by Murray. Yep. Can't have that if you want to win games. So at that point, it's 3 nothing, and then not even a minute later, just a cross ice feed. At this point, though, is it more so? And it's a delayed penalty, sure, too. And King but, is the extra attacker there. Yeah. But you can't really let that puck get through, right? If you're Zaitsev, you're trying to bat that down or at least make it a little more difficult to get across. Definitely. And, I mean, it's been the theme of the season, Zaitsev and the kind of defensive covers just falling apart there whenever he's on the ice, no matter who's on the ice with him. So that's a tough one for Zaitsev for sure. And Matt Murray got a piece of that. Like, he was was a part of that play. Like, it's not like he fully got beat there, but... He just doesn't get enough of it, unfortunately. And yeah, it's like it's it's Patty Kane. Like you give him a cross ice pass, he's probably gonna bury that. So at least Matt Murray got a piece of it, but too little, too late. Yeah, Patrick Kane. I'm pulling it up right now. What do you? How many goals do you think he has in the season? No, over in his career. Oh well, he just turned. He um, obviously set a record as players do against Sens, and I think he just passed. Um, Larson and he's behind Bobby Hall now with like 604 or something like that. No, no, 408. Oh, 408. Okay, so it must have been 404 maybe, but yeah, that's that's something a like lot that. of goals. That's yeah, a lot of goals. Uh, he's three. I was points. only off by 200. Come on, <laughs> three points away from 1100 in his career. But last night, you gotta hope that the Senators would have given you a better third period effort than they did. You want to see a little silver lining? Talk about positivity here, as, as we're known for, but. The shutout list streak continued. It took another <laughs> send central God. jinx in the second intermission. 72 straight games they had been, and now it's 73. So credit to Alex Formanton, an absolute laser to get the centers player. on the board. But when it's 4 nothing, it certainly doesn't have the same impact. Yeah, that was one of those, it's like... When they pan the camera to the Sens bench, like I think Brady was really into it, and then the rest of the guys are just like kind of like casually hanging a, a hand out to be fist pumped. There, they weren't really too stoked about that. And then for me, at the end of the game, like thirty seconds left, that wrist shot and I know goalie friendly show. That's about as sexy a save as you can make if you're Marc Andre Fleury, just flashing the leather and then tossing the puck in the corner. Get this garbage out of here. Yep, that's uh, classic Marc Andre Fleury, right? When he's feeling it, he is the king and of. And that smile can be seen from outer oh space after God. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hate to see it. I'm glad you mentioned Alex Formanton, though, because he's my Sen Central standout in last night's game. I thought he was fantastic yep. up and down the ice. And I'll let you take it from here, but there's one other guy that really stood out. As I'm throwing to you, though, three shots, three hits, played over 15 minutes. And for Formington, that's quite a bit of ice time of recent days. He seems to be down around 11 and 12 minutes. We were wondering earlier in the season why he wasn't getting more ice time. Why not give him more opportunity? And again, plays over 15 against Dallas. And then again, in Chicago, before that, it was 12 minutes, 10 minutes, and in the win against Dallas five games ago, only 7.59. So wow. nice to see the coach starting to rely a little bit more on Alex Formanton. Yeah, and I think that happens because the Stutzla-Paul Brown line I thought was kind of flat yesterday. And I think when, when that happened, you, you try to turn to your other lines. And I thought Formanton played amazing. And then, hey, shout out that fourth line. And that leads to the, the next Sen Central standout. That was the greatest game we saw from Zach Sanford. Like there was 
multiple times where, you know, maybe he's not making a highlight real play, but where I was kind of glued on, like locked on to him for that shift whenever he was on the ice and he was doing everything right. Good back checks. Good. Uh, he had a couple of nice steals where he just stole the puck from players. He had a couple. He had one dangle where he deep through uh, Chicago Blackhawks defenseman. I don't think it turned into anything, but it was a nice move. And that line of uh, Sanford, Shaw, and uh, Gambrell has been looking like a solid fourth line. So that's nice to see. And hey, speaking of the fourth line, Austin Watson will come into tonight's game up against the Minnesota Wild, and that is a massive boost for the boys. So will Michael Delzato. We're yet to know who is coming out of the lineup, but when we find out, we'll let you know on Twitter at Send Central. You can follow the show on Instagram as well, locked on dot senators. You can download it wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. The Senators closing out a three-game road trip. And that brings me to maybe the most concerning stat. Now, I say this with a bit of a grain of salt because. The team clearly two years ago wasn't very good, safe to say. But now 64 road games into DJ Smith's tenure as Senators head coach. They've won 16 out of 64 games. How is that even possible? That's insane. Like, I don't like what is the the chef feeding them on the road or what's happening on the road that is just ruining these guys i don't know like that is wild that they can't perform that well and the worst part is too ross is it's not like they're dominant at home either like if we're looking like it was like on the flip side like ah they're winning all their games at home then maybe that's okay but it hasn't been good on the road and it's only been okay at home so that's tough especially now that they're legitimately going to be on the road like it's not we're going to Vancouver and that's our, our big road trip. Like now you're, they're going to be going to California for a, like a week coming up in November. Like they're going to be on some serious road trips here. So they need to figure that out because that is just brutal. And it can't even be stated enough. That was, that was just embarrassing to watch. Like for like Ross, I put more money on this game than any game this season because I was so confident that not only were the Sens going to win, they were going to dominate. And they get dominated in reverse. And especially when it's the Chicago Blackhawks and there's that dark cloud hanging over them. Like, kick them when they're down. Kick them extra when they're down. Especially when it's a franchise that's going through some scumbag stuff like the Chicago Blackhawks right now. And allowing them to get their first win in dominant fashion up against you, that sucks. Like, that's got to be one where... If you're the Sens players going home to uh, last night, that's a hard one to fall asleep to. Like that is just there's no there's no excuse for it. Like no other team has let this team beat them this season, and the Sens lose five one to them. Yeah, God. it was tough, especially after as we mentioned the way they started. But the good news is they're back in action tonight. Let's take a look at the Minnesota Wild. We also have a real funny narrative here that's building around the Montreal Canadiens. We'll we'll save that for a little later on. In the show now, does this sound familiar though? You've got one device that lets you catch a game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows. You have to use your phone to watch sports highlights, and you have to check in on your neighbor's best friend, get his login for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle. It's a great way to get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part is there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All right, Pilsy. So the Ottawa Senators fall to the Chicago Blackhawks 5-1, to one, the final score. Ottawa's lost four of its last five games. They sit in second last place in the division, 3-5. and five. 29th no, in the league, Ross. Still no overtime games this year. I find yeah, that, that surprising. a little interesting. And they've got a tough test, probably the toughest test of this road trip Tonight against the Minnesota Wild, who are five and three on the young season. They're two and one at home, but Pilsy, they've lost their last two games. What are you expecting to see performance wise from Ottawa tonight? 
Well, this is, you know, like you mentioned, the best thing about last night's game is they can play again tonight. And this needs to be an emphatic bounce back. Like, the Sens can't squeak out a one nothing win here. They got to dominate to get kind of back in the right headspace here. And like you said, tough timing up against probably the toughest opponent of this road trip in the Minnesota Wild. But the Minnesota Wild are down here. And I think... The Senators, they, like, we need one game where they play a full 60 minutes. Like, we can't have segmented bursts of amazing chemistry and just clicking and then just complete, utter collapses following that. Like, that, that's not a recipe for success, and they can't keep doing that to themselves here. So, I really want to see a good game from the Sens here. I think a big uh, deciding factor of how this team's going to do is who's playing in net. Cam Talbot has been pretty good this season, but their backup... Um, I'm forgetting his name right now. Kakinen. Kako Kakinen. Kako Kakinen, yeah. Uh, has not been very good so far. I know that because I have him in all of my fantasy leagues. But <laughs> he definitely needs some improvement there. So hopefully the Minnesota Wild do what most teams do and see the Sens and say, hey, let's get our backup in for a game here. I think that would be a big boost. But one thing I'm very worried about, Ross, Kirill Kaprizov has no goals this season. And it would just be... So on brand for him to get a hat trick up against the Sens with no goals so far. But wouldn't you say the same about Timmy? Like, how is this guy not due? I would say that. He is due. I'm saying that. Definitely he's due. And, uh, hey, it'd be great for um, for Timmy to show Kaprizov, like, hey, you're the elder statesman of the uh, up-and-coming NHL talent, but I'm still the young guy, and I can get it done here. Leads perfectly into my locked-on player, Tim Stutzla, who played not much last last night like he was benched for a pretty decent part of the game now do yeah. i agree with it absolutely not but it was especially in the second period where he only played or sorry the third period last night tim stutz had five shifts for three minutes and 40 wow. seconds so dj smith sending a message maybe but also you mentioned it that line was just flat and I was such a big believer in Nick Paul playing center. And now that I've seen it for a few games, I want him back at left wing in the bottom six. So does six. DJ. Yep. In the bottom six. Like, same with Connor Brown. Like, it was a great story last year. 21 goals. I do still see some offensive upside there. But they're third-line players. They We need... On a, on a cup-contending team, those guys yeah. are bottom six guys. Yep. They they need a player to play with Timmy so bad. Somebody who can feed him, give and goes. And <laughs> I is have an Jake idea. Guy? Well, yeah. We, like, Giroux is the absolute dream, and I would give up so That's much. That's not even my idea. Shane, we need Shane Pinto back so goddamn badly, Ross. Read off the Shane Pinto stats for this team when they don't have him and when they do. It is night and day. Yep, since the start of last season. So Shane Pinto was just a sophomore at North Dakota when this started. But without Shane Pinto in the lineup, in their last 49 games, without Shane Pinto, they have 15 wins. 15, 30, and 4. But what about when they add the 20-year-old center into the lineup? Well, they finished last year 9-2-1, and one, and then they were 2-1, and one, when he or sorry, they were three and one. When or two, was it two and one? It had to be two and one two because and I've one. got the stat here in finality, and it's eleven three and one when Shane Pinto is in the lineup. So that that just tells you the discrepancy of what this team is like with center depth hey, and without. Look good, play good, right? You're missing <laughs> the most handsome guy in your lineup. Look what happens. Yep, and then Colin White being out too doesn't doesn't help anybody down the middle. So this is a thin team. They were thin going into training camp, and now even more so now 10 or so, – well, eight games into the season, we got to see how they can bounce back because that was, that was a kick in the teeth last night, certainly. But the best way to do it is get up off the mat and try to get right back into it tonight. So Tim Stutzla coming off only 12 and a half minutes – no offensive opportunities, just one shot on goal. Really not much happening on the score sheet for him. Tonight, he breaks out. Because I can only bet on Timmy to score so many times. Like, the wallet is taking an absolute beating right now. I hear you. So I got Timmy locked on player. How about you? All right. Well, I'm going to go a little bit different direction with my locked on player. It's a guy who's a big part of this culture, I, I believe, that the boys love him. He hasn't played a single game this season. It's Austin Watson. I think 
This is the exact kind of morale boost. And, you know, on a back-to-back opportunity, especially when you get embarrassed, no, not Uncle Deli, Austin Watson is my guy. I'm, I'm going to be locked off. Uncle Deli. How about that? I don't want to watch him when he's on the ice. So that's my locked off player is Uncle Deli. My locked on player is Austin Watson. And that's because he's a guy, it's a back-to-back game where you've just been so terrible the first game. You need some new legs, some new players hopping in here. And Austin Watson is going to provide that spark in a much different way than, you know, popping a big goal or something. I want to see him get a well-timed block. A big hit. Hey, maybe even maybe not a scrap because he's just coming back his first game. But I wouldn't be against that if he gets in a tilt here. So just bring some positive energy to this team that just had arguably their worst. No, not arguably. Just had their worst game all season. They need a spark here. And I think Austin Watson can provide that. Who comes out of the lineup for Austin Watson is a great question that we'll get to right after a word from our friends at Bet Online, the number one sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. And for great reason as well, you can bet on absolutely anything with our friends at betonline.ag. And if you want a little welcome bonus, why not use our promo code Locked On? So if you go to betonline.ag, get a free account, and then use our promo code Locked On, you get a 15. 15- 50% deposit on your first deposit, you get that much as a welcome bonus. If I could speak properly, my speaking skills, Pilsy's parlay skills, very similar. Are you going to try to lead these people? I know everyone's fading you at this point. Ross, I'm just going to be straight up with everyone. I'm out of money. <laughs> like I'm, My betonline.ag account is... Is empty. Like that's how bad Pilsy's parlay of the game, uh, parlay of the day has been. And like I said, I was like, okay, parlays haven't been going my way. Let's just take an automatic W here up against the Blackhawks. So I, I just put the little amount I had left on the Sens and look how that ended up. So yeah, that's that's the thing. I got to be responsible sometimes. I'm taking a breath. I'm taking a much needed breather here. Maybe next week I'll be back in it here because. It's just, I'm down bad. I'm down bad. So let's take a little breath here. Maybe I'm going to just watch how things go, try to recalibrate my model, my betting model, and then we'll go from there. So Pilsy's parlay of the day, taking a responsible break from sports gambling. Wherever there's a loser, there's also a winner. So if you want to be that winner, go check out betonline.ag and use our promo code locked on for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. It's Bet Online, your online sports book experts. All right, Pilsy. So it's an Ottawa Senators game day in Minnesota, and we already know there are two lineup changes coming. Michael Delzato will slide in somewhere on defense, and Austin Watson among the forward group. Now, the natural move would just be to take Logan Shaw out. Do you believe that to be the situation tonight? I think it will be. However, Ross, and this is something we glossed over um, on last night's game, Logan Shaw has been one of their best face-off performers all season, and they need that so goddamn badly. Josh Norris went zero for nine. Math guy, that's zero percent success in the face-off dot. This team got absolutely dummied in the dot last night, and Sure, he's only a fourth-line guy, and he might only actually take eight draws, but if he can get above 50% as one of the centermen in those draws, that's pretty important. So for me, it's tough to take Logan Shaw out of the lineup, but I don't know what other direction you go. Like, the the next option for me would be to look at taking maybe Tyler Ennis out, which sounds crazy because he we were up in arms when the, the discussion of taking Tyler Ennis out was going to happen earlier in the year because he was so hot, but... I haven't seen him do too much lately, and I think Logan Shaw, you need him in there for the face-offs, and then Austin Watson, you need him in there for the physicality and blocking shots. So maybe you give Ennis a little bit of a break here. That's Honestly, that's probably where I would go. If you're looking just at who played the least in the night before, Logan Shaw is the guy coming out of the lineup. He played nine minutes and 50 seconds, and 33 of it was shorthanded. And that's somewhere that Austin Watson will slide in. No doubt he'll be killing penalties tonight. So I think that's a pretty fair assumption that we're going to see 
Austin Watson replaced Logan Shaw alongside Dylan Gambrell and Zach Sanford, who I think had no doubt his best game as an Ottawa Senator against Chicago. I wonder if it's that Chicago St. Louis rivalry. Maybe he's got some bad blood on that team. I don't know what it is, but he looked like a man possessed. So I wouldn't mind seeing him get a little extra ice time tonight, try to like catch lightning in a bottle and see what he can bring going forward. Now on defense, Lots of options to come out of this lineup. Basically, take your pick outside of Shabbat and Zub. Who would be your choice to come out? And even if it's different, who do you think DJ Smith will take out tonight? Well, my choice, and I'm glad you worded it like this, would be Nikita Zaitsev. Like he's he's been arguably their worst defender all season. DJ Smith has tried to put every other player with him, and it hasn't worked. I know he's got the contract. I know he's the elder statesman on that right side, but I think everybody once in a while, if you're playing bad, just you need kind of a reality check. You need to be humbled a little. Like you can't keep allowing him to have these games and say, it's not a problem. We're going to keep putting you in. So I think, especially on a back-to-back, give him a break, take Zaitsev out and see what this decor looks like without him. Because with him, it hasn't worked. And I'm not saying this is a long-term thing, maybe just for one game here, especially since Ottawa plays again on Thursday. So it's not like he'd be out and he'd be getting rusty and not playing for a while. So I think that would be an appropriate move. However, I can almost guarantee you that that is not what's going to happen. Likely, we're probably going to see Victor Mete slide out of the lineup here. Even Nick Holden and, yeah, the great gap control that was... And, uh, well, just good play early on in the season. That's kind of disintegrated. Now, last night, he was dashed to the night before in, uh, or sorry, not against Dallas, uh, against Washington. Last Monday, he was a dash three. So you're looking at a situation where even he hasn't played his best hockey recently. He would not be my choice to come out. My number one choice would be Josh Brown. I think that it's just an easy change and, He hasn't done much to deserve staying in the lineup either, but I wouldn't argue if it's Nikita Zaitsev. I do think the contract situation and the way DJ Smith just sees him as a player for better or worse isn't going to be conducive to him coming out of the lineup, but certainly lots of options. Now, if you're Michael Delzato, what are you going to try to do to stay in the lineup? Because that's something that has uh, evaded him of recent years. I think if you're Michael Delzato, like the reason – the Sens were so interested in you and gave you a two-year, $2 million contract was because of the way he was playing in Columbus, which was a physical style. I think we talked about it when they signed him. He led the Columbus Blue Jackets in hits. Like, why why does he look pedestrian with this Ottawa Senators team when they need him to play physically, especially when their more physical shutdown guys like Josh Brown aren't getting it done? You, he needs to do what Josh Brown isn't doing. And I think that can help cement his place in there instead of Josh Brown. So for me, what I want to see from Del Zotto is ramp up that physicality. Let's see what you did in Columbus. Let's see you do it here. And the Ottawa Senators would be better for it. No question as they've been getting dominated physically. Yep. Not only, uh, it was kind of 50-50 last night. Although there's no chance there were 71 hits total in that game. No didn't chance. Didn't seem like it. Yeah, it there really didn't barely seem like it any physicality and i think that ottawa would be best served especially as the road team to go in and try to bang bodies the first three that's why austin shifts. watson is a big addition here yeah this minnesota team they're, they're big and physical you look at up and down the lineup marcus guys like Felino. marcus felino comes to mind right away joel erickson eck the big centerman maybe not the meanest guy but at the same time he can he can uh, separate body from puck so that's their top line Beyond that, there's not a whole lot of depth right now. No, there really isn't. Yeah, I'm looking at their line right, their lines right now, and even their second line, like Fiala, great player, Freddie Goudreau, and then Ryan Hartman, yeah. not bad well, players, but are you talking top six guys? I don't think so. No, but I mean they're missing too. Like this super rookie Matthew Boldy, he's a good player, and Matt yeah. Zuccarello both out with injury. So at that point, you're looking at two thirds of your second line, and everybody else has to take on a little bit more. There's lots of names here that I'm not even familiar with that uh, Sens fans will be seeing for the first time. The only other name I recognize on this forward unit is uh, Nick Bukestad. Other than that, like Brandon. Yeah, I don't know the rest of the guys. Adam (laughs) Beckman, Connor DeWar, Kyle Rao. I don't know any of these guys at all. And on defense, Dmitry Kulikov's playing with Jared Spurgeon, the captain of the team. This decor is very mobile. 
That's something that Ottawa's going to have to be aware of. The stretch passes, Jonas Brodeen, Matthew Dumba. And the bottom pair is John Merrill, who Ottawa saw a lot of last year. He was with the Montreal Canadiens. And Kalen Addison, another solid rookie. So my key to victory here is to wear out the top line because I think that's most likely to be doing the damage for Minnesota. Yeah, I think that's a good one for sure. And my key to victory here is going to be kind of similar, but in a, in a different light is let's see the bottom six forward group really take over in this game. Yeah. The top line can't do it all. That second line is flat. And let's be honest, that's not, that's not a real second line. Like the only reason that's a line is because Shane Pinto is out. So the top two lines cannot be relied upon as heavily as they have been. I want to see that third line of Formington, Tierney, and Ennis. Like, man, these guys were buzzing at the start of the season. They were leading the team in points for so long. So I really want to see this team get into the bottom six, get into a groove, and dominate that weak bottom six of the Minnesota Wild, like you were talking about. So this is their chance to shine. DJ Smith obviously liked what he saw from that fourth line, giving them a little more ice time, not uh, giving Timmy that ice time that usually he's used to. So Take advantage of that. Keep stay in DJ Smith's good books and keep going because as players get healthy here, those roster spots aren't going to be warm and cozy here. Like like uh, with Austin Watson coming back, I'm not sure when Pinto's going to be back, but Clark Bishop also is another guy. Like there are guys that are going to be hungry to get back into this lineup. So if you're a bottom six guy, you're kind of on notice at this point and you need to make the most of all ice time you get. And when you get ice time up against a weaker team on the road, You need to take advantage. So that's what I'm looking at is the bottom six to dominate here. The Ottawa Senators are plus 195 on the money line on the road in Minnesota tonight. My levy lock. I'm doing it one last time, Pilsy. One last time. Tim Stutzla will score a goal tonight. You can get that at Bet Online at plus 300. Wow. Someone who won't be scoring an NHL goal anytime soon is Cole Caulfield. We talked about (laughs) yesterday. He was sent down to the Laval Rocket. Uh, for seasoning, for maybe a way to avoid whatever gong show is going on in Montreal right now, a team with only two wins in 10 games. But Pilsy, we've got uh, our crack reporters on the case that Cole Caulfield has taken out all mention of Montreal from his Instagram bio, and he's changed his display picture. Could we see a trade on the horizon? I don't think so. Um, I don't. I don't buy into the social media uh, investigating as much as other people do. So I'll just say that's that's a weird move, and maybe just a little bit of uh, teenage angst going on there. Yeah. Uh, that's like um, you know the, your girlfriend breaks up with you, and you immediately delete all your pictures off social media and stuff. Yeah, so I feel yeah. like that's kind of what's going on here. So I'll just pass this off to you and uh, you can go off King. Go, this is uh, no, do your pod no. here. It's I, all I, yours. I just think it's kind of uh, funny when, when things like that happen. But Trouble in I, paradise. Eh? I don't want him to get traded because we already lost the cock and yammy narrative. I need yeah. this. I need yeah. this. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is your like situation. This is why the Joker never actually kills the Batman. What, what's the point of his life after that? What's the point of Ross Levitan being on the Locked On Centers podcast <laughs> if you can't chirp Cole Caulfield getting sent down to Laval? You, yeah. gotta, you need it. Hey, you know what else I need? I need wild gambling picks. And I, speaking of social media investigation, there is an, uh, I'm not going to keep him unnamed, but a sense prospect who's giving out gambling picks for the NBA and NHL. It's hilarious. It's like basically pro-line-esque. He's giving out like 11 team parlays and he's saying, that's what I'm going to start doing here. Turn Jeez. $5 into 2000 book it. It's so funny. So uh, we might next time he tweets out, I followed the account five followers by the way, but it's definitely a sense prospect who's running it. We're going to give out those same picks and see where nice. it goes. But that that's hilarious. Hey, eh, Bills. That is pretty funny. And hey, like if he's having success in the parlay game, I t- tip my cap to him. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, we'll be back tomorrow to try it again. But for today, we say goodbye again. You can follow us on social media at Send Central on Twitter. We'll be live tweeting tonight's game in Minnesota. So it's an 8 p.m. start Eastern time. And we'll chat again tomorrow. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day.